Welcome back, guys. As you can see, I got most of my stuff laid out here. Welders behind me. My job, take four inches out of this beam and install those adjusters. So, simple way to do it. Simple. <laughs> okay. Put an adjuster here and you put an adjuster here with the idea that you can then use the screws to move it up and down, adjust your ride height, slam this thing, that kind of stuff. I had initially talked in a previous video about removing these brackets here and here and taking all four inches out of the middle, right? The idea is then you, you figure out how much you need for that, add two inches on either side, cut, 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 squeeze it back together, weld it up, and then these get moved over and all that. That's actually gonna be more hassle than it's worth. What's actually gonna save me time is install the adjusters not remove these brackets. So I'm going to remove the exact amount that I need, basically that much right there, out of this and out of this, so that when these are installed, the beam should be at stop width. I'm then going to take two inches out right here and two inches out right here, sleeve it, okay, which then brings this in two inches brings this in two inches, and I'm all good. This bracket gets to move, this bracket has to move, done. It costs me more to cut, 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 and sleeve. However, it's gonna be a lot easier to do that weld and that weld than it is to remove this one, weld these back in place, and have them be as strong. I want these to be absolutely rock solid. That's factory, so I'm gonna keep it factory. This, I got no, no concerns if I sleeve this that it's gonna be nice and strong. That I won't have any concerns about. These have to move either way. No matter what, when I take four inches out, this sucker's moving two inches that way, this sucker's moving two inches that way, I'm gonna to have to move them back. This is for the steering box. This is for something else, I can't remember what. Anyway, so, long story short, too late. Uh, that has to move by the way, that has to move by the way, those I'm going to feel more comfortable moving um, than these. All good? All right, so how am I going to do it? Clean it up. I'm taking in sections, clean it up, weld in the adjusters, stock beam with adjusters. That's step one. Step two, cut, sleep. To do this, I'm going to use all that crap to clean this up, get it down to bare metal, measure very carefully, mark it with my scribe, nice sharp, lots of measurements, make sure I'm doing exactly what I need to. Air-cooled, A-I-R-K-E-W-L-D, air-cooled. Um, every time I look at it, I see arc well just because my brain wants to like think in those terms. Uh, suggest that these get clocked at 25 degrees. So I'm going to be measuring very carefully to make sure that I get this clocked how I need to. Okay. Worst case scenario, I am going to clock it slightly more. So it gives me a little bit more adjustability up and down. But it's basic math. If I got to move it 25 degrees, 25 divided by 360, that's going to give me a portion of, you know, percentage of how much I need to rotate this thing um, or how much I need to uh, adjust it in terms of measurements. And I'll have lines scribed. I move it up a certain amount, down a certain amount, whatever. You know, believe it or not, English professor, I'm pretty good at math, so this shouldn't be that difficult. Once those are done and I'm feeling confident that they are in the proper spot, weld them in hard and uh, then move on to the next cuts, which are gonna be easy. One thing you gotta be worried about is, um, ooh, that's shot, uh, is there are some needle bearings in here. Gotta make sure that I keep those where the uh, arms are gonna properly uh, hit them. So that's why I wanna take out as much from here as possible because the tubes come in to about here. Right? That leaves me that two inches or more. So it should work out just fine. Uh, when I need to weld it up, 
I've got some box steel that I'm gonna weld so that this thing doesn't move. Tack weld doesn't move. And uh, these will then not end up with a beam that arcs this way or more likely pivots like that. So it should work. <laughs> if not, uh, this is a not terribly expensive uh, learning opportunity. I think I paid maybe a hundred bucks for the beam and I can't remember how much these are, but man, are they well built, just in great shape. Love them. All right, let's get to it. I saved you the noise of that beast. Fairly clean. No real issues, a lot of surface rust, but not concerned about it. And uh, now it's time to do some measuring. Draw some lines for reference and go from there. Okay, first measurement I'm gonna take is this one, which is basically just over two and a half inches. So that means what I want to do is when I'm cutting here, I want to cut out two and five eighths. Okay, I want at least a sixteenth of an inch on either side, if not a little bit more. I will bevel the tube here, I'm not going to bevel this, uh, and that should give me enough. I would also rather find that I've cut out not quite enough than just a little bit too much and then have to fill that in with weld. I'd rather creep up on the cut, shave, 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 a little bit extra, a little bit extra, and then go from there. So for my measurements, I'm gonna get a center line, okay, based off of some measurements, and then I'm gonna go one and five sixteenths, one and five sixteenths, and then this is where the hose clamps come in, put them over, gives you a nice straight line, and you go from there. So, let's get to it. All right, so I've got my center mark here, basically right down the center of the nut through this crevice. Press. Now what I need to do is come in None of my rulers quite fit. I use this one. Okay. Taking three as my zero, we're gonna go over one and five sixteenths. Right there. Yep. And now in this direction, one. And five sixteenths. So now if I measure that distance from there to there, I get just over two and a half. Okay. And again, I'd rather have it be two and a half than two and three quarters. So I'm going to err on the side of slightly in too close. Ignore that mark. Slightly in too close. And then I'm going to mark it. For cutting. Yep. Here we go. Okay, hose clamps are on. I'll cut that off. If you come in, you can see just over a sixteenth inch gap there, just over a sixteenth inch gap there. Yes, I'm going to take the grub screw out. Yes, I'm taking the leaves out or the leaves out. Uh, I just wanted it in. This and the nut, everything was helping me feel confident about my alignment. Now that these are on, I'm going to flip it over, make sure, holding this up on the back side, that there's not a twist in the clamp. And then we'll make sure everything's good. In case you need to know, that nut is a 19 mil. 
that is an eight mil Allen inside it. So you knock this loose and then should allow you. There we go. To remove the grub screw. Where is it? There it is. Not sure if you can tell, but I also marked a line here and a line here uh, to note where this and this match up and the same here and here. And two marks on that side, one mark, one mark on that side, so I know not to get it flipped around. Uh, that's going to be useful later, I think. So I want to make sure I know where this thing was oriented this way and, you know, flip around and all that. So... Here's hoping I'm doing this right. It's fascinating old fashioned tech. Take it. Well, interesting. Let me show you this real quick. There you can see right there, that's where the center grub screw goes. So when you cut your leaves down, you're going to want to cut two inches off of either side so you can reuse that center. Time to cut. Just so you guys know, I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm creeping up on the cut by setting my groove first. I get a groove in the steel all the way around where I want to cut it. And then when I go back to go all the way through, I don't have to worry about it wandering on me. Right now it looks like I got about a sixteenth of an inch on either side. And again, if I need to, a little bit of sanding. As I cut through and remove, when I put that in, the adjuster in, I'm going to be beveling what's left of the original beam anyway, 
So as I bevel, I can shave a little this way and angle it or just angle it. However, I need to, to make sure that I get this distance identical. By the way, for those of you that need to know that distance, nine and five eighths from inside to inside. Okay. Nine and five eighths. Yes, I'm sure it's a metric measurement. I don't do metric much. Almost everything I have is, what do you call it? Imperial. All right. Time to go all the way through. Make that first one. By the way, if you can't smell it, the grease inside here is some old ass stuff and it stinks. See the smoke coming out. I'm happy with those cuts. So far, pretty good. A little inside the cut there. But again, better that than the other. By the way, this is not massively thick tubing. It's basically that thick. Eighth inch, maybe. Quick tip that I just thought about. Um, as you're getting close to severing, right now it's not gonna do it because this one's still in place. But when you're doing the second cut, Make sure that it's up on blocks like this so that when these two pieces break apart, they fall away rather than pinching in. If you don't have it on blocks, it's gonna grab the disc. Boom. And again, it's the spinning wheel of death, so be careful. Uh, moved these out of the way now, hoping I can sneak the grinder in to finish up that cut. That piece should just drop out. Let's go. Right there, right there. getting a little small so I should have replaced it before making that last cut give me a little bit more of a uh, deeper cut longer cut and it probably wouldn't have grabbed quite as much uh, but that's all right let's see how this uh, measures up I'll give you guys a better angle so that just a little bit of space less right there Around the back side. Probably a little more than I wanted. Eh, eh, just a little bit. All right. Not perfect, so I'm gonna have to take a little bit off there. 
and probably took a little bit too much off the back side. So that's something I'll be mindful of on the next one because I got to do all this over again. I will probably not film most of what I just did, but I will film the final cut of doing the second one just because, you know, cinema. Transfer the markings, not sure if you can see them there. Basically, come over here, make sure that's nice and square. Drop down, square along here. Don't worry too much about there. Same over here. I have my center mark, and then I verified that this mark and this mark are two and five eighths apart, give or take. And then double score with a line going this way, double score 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 with the line going through so if i have to put this piece back i can also do that i'm hoping that all makes sense now i'm going to remove the grub screw remove the leaf pack again flip it over put on the host clamps and uh, continue on as before most of the way through just have to finish like before see how it goes Some of you may have been hoping for something a little more dramatic. I was not. You'll notice, not a perfect cut there. I'll have to fix that. Me? Cutting it perfectly? What? Not so much on the other side. Not a lot of grease in the middle. Uh, it's largely contained to the needle bearings and all that jazz on the outside. So over here through these zerk fittings and whatnot. All right, well, technically I guess there's no going back now. Okay, measuring to make sure that you put the adjuster in the right spot. So, number one is they recommend a 25 degree tilt. So if this is parallel to the ground, you then rotate it back 25 degrees and that they say will get you your stock ride height and then full lower ability. Okay, so you can calculate that 25 degrees a couple different ways. One is you put an adjuster on, or you put this on the adjuster, and then as you rotate it back, however you want to do it, less clumsy than me, like this, and then as you rotate, you get your 25 degrees done. Okay. You can get some kind of damn protractor out here if you want to, if you as well. The other option is to figure out the circumference of the pipe, which isn't that hard to math. And 25 degrees is equal to 6.9%. We'll just say 7%. Okay. Of the circumference. So how do you figure out the circumference? Math from high school. The pipe is two inches around, or two inches in diameter. Two pi, which is basically 6.28 inches. Okay. So that is 
this measurement all the way around the outside. So now you do 7% of that. That gives you your approximate tilt. So I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to measure for the 25. I'm also going to do the math just to see if that worked out. So I can't use my calculator while I'm filming. So I'm going to do a quick calculation of what 7% of that number is. It's going to be like 0.43 or something like that. 0.44. Yeah, I'm going to say 0.44. That's my guess. All right, let me do the math. Okay. I told you I'm good at math. I'm actually better at math than English, even though I have a PhD in English and I'm a professor of English. Math is fun, but not for a career. Sorry for all you engineers out there. So 7%, thereabouts, 2 pi. That's what, you know, basically pi, 2r pi, right? 2 pi r which is either diameter times pi, so da 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 times 7.07, da 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 0.44 inches. So if you have a mark, you make a mark here, and then you rotate up 0.44, okay? Which is, what's that going to be? Uh, 7 sixteenths, somewhere in there. Um, yeah, about 7 sixteenths, maybe a little bit more that's gonna get you real damn close, okay? All good on that. So what I'm gonna do now is try the 25 degrees using that thing, but I'm also gonna mark it to see how close I get to that, to see um, between the two of them, I'm gonna then have some pretty good confidence that uh, I've done this right. So give me a minute to get the pipes in, or the adjusters into the pipes, and uh, we'll go from there. It looks a mess, but it's solid. I haven't welded any yet, but the, cl the clamping is solid. Verify this pipe is straight, that two by two box tubing or one and a half by one and a half. Yeah, it might be two by two. Anyway, inside diameter, whatever. Uh, so it is parallel in this plane and parallel in this plane, the two halves of the beam. This one is in place, hasn't been welded yet. So you can see the idea here is, there's our mark. And if we rotate it to there, that's basically 25 degrees. I am gonna go a little bit past because I was thinking about it. And for me, going to stock height or a little higher is great because this thing has the ability to drop the car seven and a half inches. And I am not gonna do that. I already have drop spindles on it. I'm probably dropping it two or three more inches. Um, I'm not going to need seven. So uh, by giving myself a slightly higher than stock starting position, it allows me a little bit of fungibility. And these do not have to be exactly the same because once they're in, if this one, if the grub screw is not quite as high in that slot as this one, it doesn't matter as long as they're both locked in and the thing is uh, functionally parallel in the leaf springs in the uh, you know the torsion springs and then the arms so I am going to tack weld that one in a few spots try to sneak in a few areas um, really hold it in place as best I can from the front probably two or three on each side and then I'm going to do the same clamp up back here make sure that everything cross angled and all that is uh, correct in its dimensions from there to there for both tubes and uh, then I will tack that one in. Once I got them both in, I will reclamp and uh, finish up some of the welding, going back and forth between the two and uh, making sure that I watch my heat. All right, back in a bit. Tacked up, clamps in place on the other one. So tack it up and let's go. With the beam, basically dead level if you come in here and I put it at that we are at about 28 29 degrees maybe 30 on this one about 32 is that too much yeah it's supposed to be 25 however like I said I'd rather have it be a little bit too much that way than a little too much that way. 
if they are clocked too much down, then the thing is going to basically never be able to get back to stock height. This thing, I can get back to stock height if I move this to just down a little bit, down just a little bit, both to where they're essentially at 25 degrees, I've got stock right height. So that was my goal. Again, I don't need the infinite adjustability of this thing. This thing's gonna move probably from there to about there if I'm lucky, maybe a couple inches. Uh, so anyway, a bit too much of a gap here, not thrilled by that, but the sleeve underneath is a full one inch sleeve. So there's a half inch here and a half inch underneath. I'm welding the snot out of it and uh, going from there. I'm gonna do individual sort of quarter inch, really get the heat up, let it sink in kind of welds. Uh, yes, I'm doing flux core. Uh, I don't have gas and I don't have the environment for gas because I'm outside. So too breezy, gas will blow away. I don't have pristine conditions, but I'm feeling uh, pretty good about this. So I've also measured this distance multiple times basically dead on, all good. So onward. All righty, welded in. I have not removed brackets or bracket. I have not done any of that. That will be in the next episode. So for right now, just a quick look through. I feel good about the welds. I know some of you are gonna be like, man, those are some nasty boogers and whatever. Uh, I got good penetration. I left a nice gap between them. All the measurements line up. That's nice and straight. That's nice and straight. They're nearly the same. I know they look a little bit off from the angle right now, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how they came out. This one's like just a few degrees more this way. Uh, that allows me to set it up however I need to, and uh, all should be good. Again, I show you how I did it, not necessarily how to do it. Uh, if you get some value from this, awesome. Uh, including mocking me and my booger welds. Uh, I am not going to grind them down. Uh, I see no reason to. You can't see this thing, and grinding away takes away some of the metal. So no point in doing that. Uh, I have gone back over some where I found some holes uh, between, because uh, I would weld about that much at a time, and sometimes there might be a little bit of a gap, so I'd go back and try to weld them together. Uh, if you look close enough, unless I'm not zooming in, you look close enough, there's some nasty in there, but every once in a while, like here, eh, that's not terrible. I'll take it. So critique away or give me a thumbs up. Either way, uh, I'm moving on to, got to go to the steel store tomorrow so I can get some inserts, uh, tubing, uh, and go from there. Talk to you later.